Hello everyone, welcome back to Hassab from Macarbo's channel. If you watched the previous video, you now understand how the tow bolt car battery works. But as I promised on that one, I am making a video today about how the AGM battery is designed. So no different than all the other videos, I'm going to bring the camera close so you can see it better. So let's get started. So before we get started on how the AGM battery is constructed, we're going to do a very short recap on how the regular tow bolt lead acid batteries work have my notes from the previous video in case you didn't watch it so we're going to go over it real fast so as previously explained there's a negative and a positive plate with a porous separator in between on a regular battery that form an element an element produces two volts and a cell is composed of several elements and to make a 12 volt battery you need six of them and that composes the 12 volt car battery that we know so if you want to know more about this battery go ahead and watch the previous video because I'm about to move on to today's topic. So the AGM battery still has the same principle as the regular battery but it's designed a lot more efficiently and because of that it withstands more vibration and is able to produce more cranking power within the same space. So the similarity is that each cell is still going to produce two volts so you're still going to need six cells to produce a 12 volt battery. Now where the difference comes is that the cells are designed very differently than the regular car batteries. This is an overview. There's a positive lead grid, there's a positive plate, then you have the positive plate with a microglass fleece that absorbs the electrolyte, then you have a negative grid and a negative plate, and they're sandwiched together, and several of them are going to compose a cell. And I already said that it's going to take six cells to produce the 12 volts. This arrangement that you see here is still going to have the rectangular or square shape that the car batteries are known for, and how you can distinguish an AGM battery from a regular car battery is going to be for one that is going to be a completely sealed battery and more likely the AGM word is going to be stamped on the top and the side of the battery and sometimes they make the casing a different color for example gray tends to be one of the more common ones and I know I didn't mention it earlier but AGM stands for absorbing glass mat and right there absorbs the acid so now that we understand this design that from the outside like I said it looks almost like a regular battery we're going to move on to another design and other enthusiasts that have hot rods or very expensive vehicles, they prefer the battery that I'm about to show you and then you're going to see why. So let's move on to that one. Okay, so let's move on to a more efficient design. The pioneer of this design is a brand named Optima. There are now several companies that make this kind of battery, but the hot rod enthusiasts, they know this brand. So let's take a peek at how this battery is constructed and why it's even more desirable than the previous one. An Optima battery has what is called spire cell technology and that's because the grid plates are in a spiral form right there and in between these lid grids there's an absorbent glass mass separator that obviously is going to absorb all the acid just like a sponge does the grids and the glass mat are going to compose the cells now the cells are tightly compressed and that's going to add vibration resistance and that's why these batteries are preferred in vehicles that go off-roading jumping super rough terrain because there are no plates that are going to vibrate, loose, break off, and cause a short. The cells are very, very tight and sealed because each cell has its protective film. And no different than any other battery, to make the 12 volts, since each cell is going to be 2 volts, for a 12 volt battery, you're going to see 6 of them. So you're going to see 6 round spirals. And that's going to be your 12 volt battery. A 6 volt Optima is going to have 3 big ones. Well, there are advantages of the Spire Cell technology AGM batteries and obviously the regular AGM batteries is that they're going to have more cranking power, they're going to have more vibration resistance because, like I said, there are no plates that are going to vibrate loose and break off. And one of the biggest advantages is that these batteries are sealed, they can be mounted in any position. Regular car batteries, they have to be mounted upright. This you can mount it sideways, you know, vertical, even upside down if you have to. Plus you don't have to worry about spillage. So if you put it in the trunk and it's carpeted, it's not going to be a problem. More features. These batteries are maintenance free, so you don't have to worry about adding electrolyte. And since the electrolyte shouldn't evaporate because it's a completely sealed battery, it should have a longer life. So now that we understand this, let's move on to a very, very common issue that people that don't understand this type of batteries run into and they end up losing faith on them when it was in fact a lack of knowledge on this type of battery on their part 
that cause the battery to be rendered useless. Now when you discharge a battery like this to nearly nothing or one volt or two volt and all you have is your regular old-fashioned charger that has been around forever because the old car battery chargers don't have the technology that is needed to charge these batteries correctly but there's a way around it. So if you don't want to buy a modern digital battery charger to be able to charge your Optima or any other spider cell technology battery correctly and you want to keep your old one, you still can. But here's what you have to do. When this battery is down to, like I said, nearly nothing or just a couple volts. So you connect your jumper cables the way you would do when you're jump starting a vehicle. Negative to negative, positive to positive. And that other battery needs to be a fully charged battery. Then you connect your battery charger. But by having it connected to a fully charged battery, you're equalizing it. And your old style car battery charger is going to be able to recognize the load. So you start charging your battery. When your Optima battery or your other spider cell battery reaches at least 10 and a half volts, then you can go ahead and remove the other battery and finish charging the Optima. If you do it this way, you're going to be able to restore a spider cell technology battery back to its fully charged condition with an antique battery charger. So keep that information in mind when recharging a fully discharged Optima battery. So there you have it. Now you know how the AGM battery is designed and now you understand why this configuration is more desirable than the regular lead acid battery that has been around for centuries. Thanks for watching today's video. See you next time.